Hello, listeners. Thank Tudor, it's Friday. Some of you may still be slumbering in bed, cocooned in the warmth of your duvet, eyes just opening, when you see the ping of an email telling you that, thank Tudor, it's Friday. And with a wry smile, you reach and press play, and you can now be cosseted in the warm and welcoming tones of my delicious voice and its rich timbre. Anyway, enough about me. Well, just for a little while, let's get down to some questions. James Cocker asks, HG, is there a time or reason a narcissist won't hoover despite not having a replacement and a low hoover bar? In short, no. If the hoover bar is low and the narcissist, as I assume from your question, does not have a replacement available, the narcissist is going to hoover the appropriate target because the demands primarily for fuel insist upon it. I suppose if you absolutely stink to high heaven, you might not be hoovered, although I suppose in those circumstances it would be done through an electronic hoover, wouldn't it? So, if the hoover bar is very low, then you're going to be hoovered. Shay Hartman asks, why not just be a decent person and actually form and build healthy relationships? I'm assuming this is directed at narcissists as a whole and not just at me. What you have to understand, Shay, is that many narcissists believe themselves to be a decent person. Now, of course, you'll think, well, that's impossible. How can they not see that they are an indecent person? But remember, their narcissism blinds them. So the lesser just has no awareness of what they're doing is wrong, is unpleasant. They, most of the time, just don't notice that what they're doing is problematic. It's in the same way that you might have a particular habit and you don't realise that you're doing it. With a lesser, they often don't realise that what they're doing is problematic. And if it's pointed out to them, it's met with a shrug. They just do not get it. The mid-range narcissist, of course, has the sufficient cognitive function to be aware that their behaviours are deemed by society as wrong. However, they will always put it in context, namely the narcissistic context, which means... Their behaviour is justified. There is a reason. There is an explanation or an excuse. So, for example, you might view the narcissist's behaviour of walking off in huff every time they are challenged or of turning around and engaging in word salad as unpleasant behaviour and completely unnecessary. But from the narcissist's perspective, although he might see that he is walking off and not speaking, in his mind, because of the narcissistic perspective, he regards your behaviour as problematic. His narcissism automatically makes you the problem and he the victim. That's how it works. He does not stand there and think, I'm actually being a complete twat today, so, but it doesn't really matter. They don't view it that way. They regard their behaviour as entirely justified and appropriate. With a greater narcissist, we realise that our behaviour is unpleasant and we also realise that you may not have actually done anything wrong. Not always. In many instances, we do still see, because our narcissistic perspective is such, that you have done something wrong. In other instances, you might not have done anything wrong in the instant, but there is an historic transgression, which means that you need to be punished, and punished severely. That's why it's only the greater that involved, uh, uh, embarks upon a malice campaign. You might have done something a long time ago where there appeared to be no retribution. But there always will be. As great as we make a mental note of it and we come and get you later when you least expect it. And through a malice campaign. Little girl asks, Mr Tudor, I am aware I fuel him when I'm shouting, but I cannot stop myself from doing so. I can't pretend to be nice to him. Oh, I fully understand why you can't pretend to be nice to him. He's a narcissist, isn't he? What an odious piece of excrement he 
is. But what you're doing is you're giving in to your emotional thinking. So you know that you're fueling him. Well done for recognising that. And what's happening is, because you're continuing to have this engagement with the narcissist, your emotional thinking peaks. And in such circumstances, it draws you into going into battle with the narcissist. It destroys logic, as you know. Your logic says, this person is a narcissist, I must not fuel them, I must not engage. Once you know, you go, you get out and you stay out. But your emotional thinking doesn't want you to listen to that, it doesn't want you to apply it. And therefore, in such circumstances, in effect, the red mist descends. And your emotional thinking tells you, this guy's a douchebag, he's a complete grade A schmuck. Unleash hell on him. But logic says, all you're going to do is fuel him, keep him coming back for more, this will be a challenge to him, and he'll lash out at you. But you fail to listen to logic. So what you need to do is not get yourself in a situation of being near the narcissist to begin with so that you don't shout at him. Stay away. Impose no contact from the off. Do that. You won't be near him to shout at him. Have no method of communication. You won't feel compelled to shout at the narcissist. And moreover, you won't have the means of doing it. And if you need any help in this regard, consult with me and I will show you the way forward. Yayamina asks... <clears throat> HG, I have to ask this. Since you've opened up your channel, have you had women approach you on YouTube still wanting to engage in a relationship with you? Yes. Do the women, or should I say potential fool givers, feel as if you will not hurt them or affect them in a negative manner since you are providing guidance on how to be more aware of dealing with someone of your kind? What's happening is that you're dealing with people who are naturally addicted to my kind and there is this attraction to me as being the best of the best and also this mysterious individual, which has its own allure. And also there's an element of gratitude with many of these people. I have helped them through the information that I've provided. And as empathic individuals, their gratitude causes them to want to somehow engage with me. Remember, your emotional thinking will cloud your logic. And the majority of people keeping emotional thinking under control when it comes to me recognize brilliant information hg thank you ever so much for helping me i appreciate it and that's as far as they go others might say i don't like you hg but i have to recognize the brilliance of what you do that's fair enough some people have a rant at me i get that they're hurt and they're still hurting it's only a bit of fuel to me and i understand why they're doing it the only time that i would respond is where they're inaccurate about it but if they're expressing an opinion with regard to the type of person they believe me to be, they're entitled to express that opinion. It's not an issue for me. Those that look to take it further are being uh, at the height of their addiction. They probably remain uh, invested in a, another narcissist in terms of an ensnarement. Either they're still in that relationship, or it may well be the case that they are thinking about that narcissist regularly, talking about them with their friends, that they're being hoovered. And as a consequence, their emotional thinking is so high that when it comes to me, they continue that addiction by thinking that they could have some form of a relationship with me. Whereas, of course, logic suggests you must not do that. You also have to bear in mind that there are a number of narcissists that appear across my platforms. I always spot them, uh, sometimes immediately, sometimes it takes a little bit of time. And also I spot them because I'm often privy to additional information beyond that which appears on my platforms. These individuals email me and whilst I keep that such uh, communications confidential, if I ever open the lid on some of the uh, emails that I receive, you would be both horrified, amazed and also probably think, good lord, he really does attract some nut jobs. There are a number of narcissists that obviously don't realise what they are, because they're less or mid-range, they invariably think they're empaths, and they try to seduce me. And it's blatant and it's obvious. And so that's why many of the individuals that want to engage in a relationship with me are actually narcissists, and a small proportion are damaged victims who have very high emotional thinking. Cat Cathy asks, Thank you, awesome as usual. You're most welcome, Cat. What is the creature within the narcissist? Is it a demon? Are narcissists possessed? No, we are not possessed. I know that our behaviour might be viewed as demonic, 
and one can understand that as an adjective. However, we are not demons. There are no such things. And when people talk about the Jezebel spirit, no, it's nothing to do with that either. Once upon a time, you might think that the behaviour of a narcissist would be akin to a demon or this Jezebel spirit, perhaps back in medieval times when there was less enlightenment about certain behaviours. But it is a psychological condition which has arisen as a consequence of genetic predisposition allied with a lack of control and environment which has created a self-defence mechanism. So no spirit entered me when I was a baby that created me. Um, some witch didn't come along and swap little HG for demon HG, spiriting me away into some cabin in the woods and leaving some changeling in my place. Um, Satan didn't appear and give me mouth to mouth, pouring his venom and hatred into me. So, no, we're not demons, although we behave in a demonic fashion, and the Jezebel spirit is absolutely bottle to do with it. Rosie Grace writes, thanks for educating us, HG. Thank you, Rosie. And I hope all is rosy and graceful in your garden today. Empower Empath exclaims, we can't wound by calling them microdick. Damn it. No, you can't. Why? One, it's an insult. Therefore, negative words creates fuel. Two, you would probably say it with a contemptuous or haughty or derogative tone. Thus, your tone provides fuel. If you were doing this in person, your eyes would show contempt or hatred or irritation. Thus, it's fuel. Your body language would do so and your facial expression. Even if you sent a text writing micro dick, that would provide a very small dollop of negative fuel. Therefore, don't bother. Say in set double A writes, Hi HG, is it always the greater, spelled G-R-A-T-E-R, -E well I know that we might grate on people's nerves, and I haven't grated any cheese recently, but it's G-R-E-A-T-E-R, -E just for further notice. Is it always the greater that is someone who is successful, or can it be anybody, now your housewife? Well, there are a string of different criterion that establish whether somebody's a greater. And theoretically, somebody who's a housewife could be a greater. For instance, they might have been, um, had a successful political career and then give that up. So they've got a very large established fuel matrix. They have been a high achiever and they're of sufficient cognitive function that supports being a greater. They're Machiavellian and they have self-awareness. So it's possible, but it's less likely. Michelle Clark writes, the sound is great. I'm glad that you think so. Amanda Suzanne, HG, my favourite narcissist. Of course. All of us are just a pale imitation. Mother in the Moon asks, if someone was confused on whether they are a narcissist or a super empath, what would you say this means? Asking for a friend. Of course you are. What would I say this means? It means you're confused as you identify in your question. Of course, if you're asking yourself, are you a narcissist? Invariably, you're not. Go to the video that I've recorded with the very helpful question, am I a narcissist? And if you think you're a super empath, well, you may well be. But take an empath detector test with me. Go to narcsite.com, tickle your way over to the menu bar, click on the button there, read what's there, book the, sh the consultation with me, and I'll help you out. Renuka Shind asks, thank you, HG, you're welcome. What is the best way to react to a narcissist who accidentally bump into them? Have a great weekend. I hope you have a super weekend, Renuka. If you accidentally bump into a narcissist, you turn around and unbump. You walk away. You don't stand and make nice. You don't engage in pleasantries. Why? That's a form of engagement. Now, it might be that you could stand there and have a little bit of civil chit-chat with the narcissist, and they're pleasant to you back. And you're left thinking, so where's the problem? Well, one, you've given them fuel. What does that mean? That all else being equal, you've lowered the hoover bar 
and therefore next time there's a hoover trigger you're more likely to be hoovered and on that second occasion it might not be as pleasant or if it is it starts the salami slicing that draws you back in so you never ever give it an opportunity to start and one accepts that whilst you put in place a rigid no contact regime there is always going to be some kind of risk that the narcissist will ambush you if you live in the same city they might just turn up at somewhere you didn't expect them to but if you've maintained a no contact regime across everything else the advantage that you then have is that your emotional thinking will be very low and so what will happen is when you bump into that narcissist logic will prevail and you will just turn around and walk away from them however if you've been thinking about the narcissist repeatedly talking about the narcissist with your friends perhaps stalking the narcissist on facebook page twitter etc your emotional thing can be very high and so then when you bump into that narcissist this is what will happen you'll hit a tipping point you'll get drawn in and that's why you'll stop and engage with them so that's why you need to get your emotional thinking down so that when you happen to bump into them you will listen to logic and you'll walk away with them do not stand and talk to them because as i say you're giving fuel increasing the risk of being hoovered okay it may be a benign interaction so you don't feel like anything bad has happened but in a way that's duping you thirdly your emotional thinking will increase as a consequence of this proximate interaction which means that let's say there's a follow-up text now later saying lovely to see you hope we can perhaps go out for a drink tomorrow night you are more likely to respond to that why because your emotional thinking has increased get out and stay out dr dot writes tudor has no control over days and time that's what you think although lilith liberated did reply with neither does god but at least tudor has the decency to exist certainly entertained me thank you lilith liberated god and butterflies how often would a covert insecure narcissist need supply well as you know i don't like the term covert narcissist it's far too narrow and you'd be talking about a narcissist which might be mid-range or greater because they have both have covert behaviors but in different ways how often would the narcissist need fuel also i don't like the term supply it's an awful awful word please don't use it use fuel it's far better and fewer letters to type wonderful so how often is fuel needed repeatedly certain narcissists if well fueled could go a number of days without any fuel before anything adverse happens some it would be a case of a morning would uh, without fuel would start to cause problems a mid-range narcissist will have a reasonably good fuel matrix and then assuming that's working well the mid-range narcissist could go a couple of days without any form of fuel whatsoever before problems start to and that's assuming there's no wounding if of course there's wounding this creates problems i recommend you read my book fury and that will help you understand in greater detail the necessity of fuel and how wounding impacts on that and the response of the narcissist time for peace asks why didn't my narcissist apply the silent treatment well one although silent treatment is something that all narcissists use it's particularly prevalent with mid-range narcissists and it might not and it might be the case that your narcissist was not mid-range so silent treatment wasn't really the go-to manipulation it might be of course that he had used that and it didn't really work and therefore instinctively he recognizes that so doesn't dole it out remember the narcissism instinctively with lesser and mid-range narcissists picks the most effective manipulations against you the ones that press your buttons the most so if you hate being shouted at for example and that's what really gets you upset and causes you to respond the narcissist will shout at you if there is a particular if you have a particular sensitivity let's say about your weight particularly a mid-range narcissist would allude to that and use it in an insulting way saying you better put that donut down stand back from the fridge fatty those type of comments so the silent treatment wasn't used essentially because that wasn't deemed to be the most appropriate form of manipulation for you and may not have formed part of the repertoire of manipulation for that particular narcissist Catalina Roses, thank you for answering my question, Mr. H.G. Tudor. Very polite of you, and you're most welcome. Shelby Lou comments, you must have been with your lady friend, H.G. Lady friend? You make me sound like I'm 75, and I'm a long way off that. Um, I think you mean girlfriend. 
Does she make me happy? Well, as you know, I don't do happiness. I'm a narcissist. But she provides me with fuel. So all's well in the world of HG. And she provides me with excellent character traits and residual benefits. So she's a fantastic and amazing individual. But hey, enough about her. Let's get back onto me. This is my show. Didn't you know that? Fiona Kennedy asks, Hey, HG, I know that narcissists don't feel love, correct? Good that you recognise that. But is it possible for a narcissist to find the perfect fuel supply? The perfect fuel supply is one that is always fresh, potent, plentiful and frequent. And as you know, the difficulty that exists is that you might provide your fuel as an intimate partner primary source frequently and in huge amounts. The problem is then it becomes stale and this devaluation occurs. The other way around, if you happen inadvertently to uh, ration it so it doesn't lose its freshness, you then run the risk of it not being provided in suitable uh, quantities and frequently enough. Thus, you are devalued. So, there is such thing as the perfect fuel supply from our perspective. Namely, it has to be potent and fresh, it has to be plentiful and it has to be frequent. But whether that can be delivered, that's the, that's the real question. And of course, in all instances, that does not occur. So, there we are. More questions answered. Everybody have a fantastic Friday. Fizz bomb feeling of a Friday. And enjoy your weekends and armed with this knowledge apply it and remember if you do have any questions if they are detailed and bespoke in nature i.e they're about your personal circumstances consultations the way forward and i guarantee they will help you read the testimonials at narcsite.com and you will learn far more there about why they are beneficial to you if you have a short question in principle about a situation or about narcissism generally Put it in the comment section of the Thank Tudor is Friday videos because that's where I go to to pick up the questions for the purposes of answering them. If you scatter them across all of the other videos, I've got several hundred of the videos and it's alongside with all of my other commitments, gathering fuel, orchestrating world domination and uh, saving the gay blind whale for the purposes of my facade. I don't have time to pull in all of that information from across all the various videos. So if you do me a favour by putting your questions on the Thank Tudor It's Friday video, then I'll do you the favour, because I'm delightful like this, of answering them. So thanks once again for your questions. Do send in further. And remember, once you know you go, get out and stay out. This is HG Tudor. Enjoy your weekend. <laughs>